Today we've got the OG of GD, the GD77 from Radiodity. That was a lot of rhyming. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. This one comes in from my buddy Garth, W... WG2G? W2... This one comes in from my buddy Garth, and we're going to take a look at it on the bench. Let's go see. Alright, we need to have a hotspot. So I've got my WPSD hotspot running here. And there is a video up in the top corner on how to get your hotspot set up for DMR usage, which is necessary in order to use a DMR radio over the internet. You can still use a DMR radio locally, but you can't do it over the internet without having some way to get from radio to internet. Check out this manual, man, that is thick. Tier one and tier two, dual time slot, DMR, dual band, VHF, UHF, 1024 channels, 2200 milliamp hour battery. How much of this is English? Oh, there's some German. All right. Radiodity usually does a pretty good job with their manuals, and they even put out updated manuals after the radio goes public online. Oh, it starts out in German. That's why I can't find the English part. Okay, there we go. So that much of the manual, which is still a pretty hefty amount, is all American. It's interesting that it's German, and you know German words are longer, so it takes a little bit more paper to put them down. That's all German, that's all English, and those are the only two languages in the entire manual. All right. We have an antenna that doesn't indicate what frequencies it is good for, but it's good for the radio, so we'll put it on, I think. Get on there. Really? That's cross-threaded. Don't want to cross-thread it. Okay, so this antenna is not happy. I don't know what the problem is. Let's try a different antenna. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yep, that one's on. Okay, good. So. It's a used radio. I wouldn't hold that against it in this case. Da 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 da. It's already got Open GD77 on it. We get a cradle. Oh, there's another antenna in the box too. Wow. Hold on. 400 to 520 and 138 to 174. Yeah, and that one goes on fine. But like I said, it's a used radio, so there could be anything going on with that other antenna. I ain't gonna worry about it. I'm gonna go back to the short one though because I have limited space between camera and desktop to work with, so. There is that. Programming cable, K connector on one end and chip USB connector on the other end. Power supply for charging. This says it wants 12.5 volts input and it puts out 8.4 volts, 400 to 450 milliamp hours. And this thing here is output 12.5 volts DC and it doesn't say how many amps it puts out on DC. So if it were me and it was my radio and this was my hand shack, which this is my ham shack, but this is not my radio, I would cut the cord and put some power poles on it and plug it into my regular 12 volt power supply and then plug that in there. And then I don't have an AC wall wart because I'm not a fan of AC wall warts. So besides booting up in Morse code, what does GD77 give us? Menu, GPS zone, satellite, location not set, GPS. Ah, this radio doesn't have GPS on it, so that's gonna make the whole satellite thing not work. Zone, zone one. So not a whole big code, code plug in here. Contact, DMR contacts, couple of talk groups, FM contacts is, FM DTMF contacts, interesting. Channel details, RSSI, it'll tell me what it's currently receiving is minus 115 dBm and that's cause ain't nothing going on around here. Firmware info, built 2023, 1231. I'm sure there's a newer version, so we'll have to play with that. Credits to all the fantastic hams that helped develop this software. APRS options, mode auto, location channel, GPS, interval every one minute beacon, DK on, compress on, slow rate, fast rate, low speed, high speed, if the GPS, if this had GPS in it. General options, no GPS, manual satellite, APO with RF, so auto power off with RF. So if you're receiving a signal, it won't, it could or could not turn off. And that makes sense. You have to have the auto power off itself turned on in order to have the auto power off defeated when it's receiving a signal. Safe power off, suspend off, eco level one, battery calibration, temperature calibration, hotspot. Oh, MMDBM or blue DB. We'll have to figure out what that means. Auto lock, key repeat, DMR, CRC, user power. I guess that's power output level. We'll have to check that. Allow PC on or off. No, P PTT or on. PTT latch off, UHF squelch, 220 squelch, VHF squelch, so tri-band. Scan on, scan mode, scan dwell, scan delay, filter time, band limits, play options, show distance, time in UTC, time zone, LEDs on, info off, time slot, power, 
both, put that up to both. Battery percentage, battery voltage, contact one line, two lines, auto. Okay, we'll leave it at auto. CTDBTA, auto night, so it knows what time of day it is and the screen would get brighter dim. Screen normal, inverted, inverted. Normal, normal's fine. Dark mode, light mode. Timeout, mode auto, contrast, brightness, brightness, brightness. And then it makes a beep sound when you've looped the menu, which is nice, so you know when to stop looking for stuff. Sound options, automatic gain control, and some beep sounds. Box tail, box threshold, microphone gain, different for DMR and FM. Let's see if I can get my DMR hotspot programmed in with my call sign and my frequency from the front panel of the radio, no code plug software. Plug in the frequency of my hotspot, DMR, DMR ID. Okay, so it enables, what is that, six, seven? It enables eight digit DMR IDs. That's a lot of DMR ID. Color code one, time slot one, TG list, Brandmeister, nice. Contact, leave it on Parrot, see what Parrot does for us. No tones, bandwidth is NA, step is 2.5, timeout timer, RX only, zone skip, all skip, channel power, master. Put it down as low as we need because my hotspot's right there. Don't really need much power to get to it. Squelch, NA, beep, yes, eco, yes. There we go. KM9G testing parrot. KM9G testing parrot. Excellent. Comes back. It's a little modulated. Let's see what we can do about that mic gain. Take it down to minus three. KM9G testing parrot on minus three. KM9G testing parrot on minus three. A little less modulated. KM9G testing parrot on minus six. KM9G testing parrot on minus six. KM9G testing parrot on minus 33. All right, so it's a little quieter. KM9G testing parrot on minus 12. KM9G testing parrot on minus 12. Okay, it's a little tiny bit modulated, but not terrible. All right, it makes contacts, it does the thing. Let's see if we can program in a local repeater from the front panel of the radio. No code plug software. You already saw me switch over parrot and change over to the frequency of my hotspot. That was fairly easy. I, I tooled around with it a little bit and it got a little easier as time went on. Let's see. Okay, so I switched it over to frequency mode and I have a local repeater here plugged in. So let's do one, four, seven, two, six, zero, zero, zero. And then we need to go into the menu. Channel power is not applicable. And there is a tone. And I keep wanting to press menu like you do on a Baofeng to go into changing that setting and you don't, you just start changing the setting. And this is 100 Hertz, no DMR features, mode FM is correct. Transmit is one, four, seven, eight, six, zero. And no APRS on the repeater. Red button to get out, red button to get out. KM9G testing. And it says it's at one watt of power. We need more than one watt of power. Power zero. It still says one watt. And the transmit's on the wrong frequency anyway. Okay, so now it has changed the talk out frequency, which was weird because what I did was I pressed left and right instead of typing in a frequency. Well, I mean, I already typed in the frequency, but I pushed left and right in order to just see what left and right did, and left and right picked up the offset. So 0 0.6 is the offset and it's positive 0 0.6. I have it all the way down on zero power, so let's go into radio options and, nope, it didn't save that. But either way, it's still saying one W up there, which I'm assuming is one watt. So, so far I'm saying not easy to program from the front panel. Not having to use any code plug software or programming software in order to get the radio programmed is a requirement in my book of any radio. It's very nice to have the programming software. However, if you're out in the field, I don't wanna bring the radio, the dock, the cable, and the computer with me in order to program in a repeater on the fly. Half a lot indoors probably isn't gonna get me outdoors. So let's see what we can do about that power. Oh, it's got a scan on boot feature. I like that. So you can just turn this thing on and it immediately goes into scan mode. That's awesome. There's a channel power in the channel details section, but I can't make any changes. I can receive the repeater, but that's really up to the repeater, not up to me. Quick menu. That was the orange button on top. At least you can do something while it's receiving.
one eternity later. P1 plus up and down arrow on the radio. That's not P1. That's squelch. There we go. There's power. Five watts. Okay. So it's the blue button plus left and right arrow gets you more power. Let's see if more power gets us to that repeater. That was horizontal. That was vertical. Let's see if it dropped my tone again. It did drop my tone again. Why is it not saving the tone? There it is. Now it's on. So I hit the green menu button to get back out. All right, horizontal, and it opens the repeater. KM9G testing on the NM5ML repeater. So it wasn't that hard to figure out. It was just the frequency offset, the power level, and the tone setting, which I guess is like three of the four settings you need in order to get into a repeater. So that's a little interesting. I wasn't reading the manual, but it shouldn't be that hard to program a radio. Maybe they fix it in future versions of the OpenGD77 firmware, but that was a little crazy. And the reason why it was difficult is because there's two different paradigms at play in the radio. One of them is... You just make the change in the menu and it sticks. And the other one is you press the menu button to make the change in the menu after you've made your change. So you change your power level, then press the menu button, where every other setting you just make the change and it's there. So that was a little weird. So that got me on the power level setting, the tone setting, and I think also on the frequency offset setting. Again, maybe they fixed it in future versions of the firmware. Let's check out power. And for checking out power, I have this Shorecom. SW102, and I have a bunch of adapters to make it work with radios like this one. So we'll take this antenna off, and what I do is I plug in the whole system and put it into the antenna that it comes with, which I can't do, so I'll kind of have to fake it a little bit to get it to work with the antenna that I'm using it with currently. Wait, I have a tool for this. Inside of my Tiny SA kit, where I keep my Tiny SA, I have an SMA wrench. Oh, is it torque? Torque spec? Yeah, it just lets go when it gets too tight. I don't know if it's the right torque amount, but it does let go when it gets too tight, which is pretty cool. And they don't sell this with the ground plane anymore, but I will leave you a link in the description down below where you can get this one without the ground plane, and then you can very easily make up a tiger tail to solve the ground plane problem. I should do a video on what tiger tails are and show if they work good or bad. Okay, and what this thing will do is it will tell me the SWR, it will tell me the power output in watts, and it will tell me the current frequency that it is receiving. So this is a pretty cool little piece of kit here. All right, turn this on. We've got this thing set to five watts now. Let me get off that repeater. I guess it technically doesn't matter as long as I ID myself. KM9G testing on the repeater. 3.34 watts output. And the battery's at 21%, so I'm not going to complain too much about that. If it charges up and doesn't solve the problem, then I'll let you guys know. While I have the test harness all harnessed up, let's try the other antenna. This is the antenna that it came with. Is it a problem with the radio or is it a problem with the antenna? Oh, it's a problem with the SMA on the radio. KM9G testing. All right, three watts. And then the big boy antenna. KM9G testing, 3.36 watts. We'll get it charged up and we'll let you know. 50 milliwatts. 250 milliwatts, 500 milliwatts, 750 milliwatts, 1 watt, 2 watt, 3 watt, 4 watt, 5 watt. And that's all, all it's got. It's 5 watts. That's all it's got. KM9G testing on 5, 2. It's got a little countdown timer to let you know how long you've been talking so you can shut your mouth. All right. Since we had the tiny SA out, we might as well. Where's my wrench? Oh, I'm digging this wrench now. So now we need some settings. Measure harmonics of 146.52 megahertz and we'll do zero equals full span 1x and then we will display draw a line at minus 16.02 which is the pass fail line and then we will level external attenuator is minus 40 to account for the external attenuator that we're going to use to not blow up our tiny sa and then i'm at five watts let's transmit this is looking good. All right, and that is what we look like after the test has completed. That's pretty slick. That's a nice clean radio. I'll dig it. Now we have the battery 66% charged. Turn on our Shorecom meter, and we're on 146.52 at five watts, and we get 5.10 watts. Nice, and now we're on 446. Actually, I think we were on 446 last time. 
Yep. All right, there we are on 146.52 at 3.8 watts. So five watts on 70 centimeters and four watts on two meters. Nice. I know some of you are gonna say something about that SWR on that antenna, so we've got a dummy load. Power on, power on, 146.52 on the display. 3.24 watts at one to one SWR. Huh, interesting to note. And 446, 4.3 watts at one to one SWR. So SWR went positive, went normal, went one to one, and power levels went down. Interesting. SWR isn't everything, folks. But the all smart hams out there, you know that. All right, so the radio works fine. The programming software is pretty cool. And the whole user interface is different. I don't know if it's better or worse, it's just different. There's some things that I like about it, some things that I don't like about it. So it's up to you and your personal preferences. I did take a look at the CPS software. I know y'all are gonna ask about that. It has a lot less things in the way, but it's still DMR at its heart. So it's less confusing, but not not confusing. But that's everything in ham radio. Confusing, but not not confusing. Welcome to the hobby. Hope you all enjoy it. There are some links in the description down below for some more information on the radio, on OpenGD77, how to get it installed on your radio, and all kinds of stuff. It isn't hard to install, so have at it, and let me know what you think in the comments down below. In the meantime, there's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.